Hello and warm welcome to your audience to New Generation Women and I'm Janine Tanzenos. My guest today is not just an expert, he is the expert in Europe in the field of psychotraumatology. I had so much I could say about him, but I decided to keep it short, just so much. He is absolutely so knowledgeable with such a vast knowledge that we could make a whole year of talk shows just with his knowledge. Second, his books and his new book, Liebe, Lust, Trauma, in English, Liebe, Lust and Trauma are translated in many languages. And third, he is traveling the world, literally traveling the world with his powerful workshops and speaking engagements. Almost next door, this time from Munich to Munich. Hello and warm welcome, Professor Dr. Franz Ruppert. Hello, Hello <laughs> and welcome to those who are now uh, listening to us and seeing us. Exactly. So nice. And um, thank you so much for taking the time. It's pretty late, but you had already dinner. So I have to catch up yeah. with this one. <laughs> I'm fine. I'm fine. <laughs> yes, send some sushi. Send some okay. sushi across. <laughs> okay. I can have some. Um, going back to a shocking news first, you said that um, almost everybody is traumatized. Mm. Does this mean that we all need therapy? So they only, does, it mean, does it mean that we all need therapy if almost no, everybody is traumatized? Need therapy. Okay. Yes. Uh, yes and no. Not the first. The first thing is to, really to 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 uh, to, un, to uh, understand or to explain why I say that nearly every one of us is is traumatized. This uh, this is, depends from the definition of trauma, of course. Mm -hmm. And uh, what we see as trauma, and there are some very explicit uh, things that traumatize people. And this one thing is war. Mm -hmm. And if you look at the, at our world and look back at the generations, you see we, nearly in every country uh, there were there are wars. Yeah, and there are a lot of people engaged in wars, and not only the, the soldiers, but also civil the civil population uh, has suffered from terror from wars. This is one thing that is very obvious. Yeah? Okay. Another thing is, uh, if you look at the couple relationship yeah, and see how much violence there is included yes. in those relationships, then you see how much uh, we trauma adult people are in a very intimate relationship, they traumatize each other. Okay. And then what is the most important thing is the relationship between parents and children. And there you see that we only, since maybe said a few generations, we are looking at children in a different way, and we say, okay, th these children are very vulnerable, uh, vulnerable uh, beings, mm -hmm. and they need a lot of care in order to grow up safely and uh, and are not traumatized. And we still there's too less consciousness about that, mm -hmm. and the consequence is that nearly every generation of parents, in some way, traumatizes the next generation of children. Yeah? Yes, you let me give, a, give an example, just two examples. Yeah? The, the one example is cesarean section. Yeah? There are high rights, uh, rates of cesarean section that no, nobody puts into doubt in, in a way. And this is what I see and I found out that the cesarean section is a traumatizing experience for a child. It's mm -hmm. also traumatizing for the, for, for the, the mother. In the other hand, and another thing, to give the children so early away in in foster care and foreign the foreign people, the, the mother it's not available, and you force babies to be able to be without the mother for hours, for days, and and this is traumatizing. Yeah? And so this is, I think, just two examples that make clear how less we still are conscious. What is traumatizing? And this is what, what I like to, to tell, tell others who want to listen to me, uh, what, what traumatizes us and to be aware of that. And of course, and then be interested not to continue with traumatization. Yeah? Mm -hmm. For me, it would be important to write in every uh, in legislation that to say no, one sh no, no human being should traumatize another human being. Yeah? If you would follow this, 
basic uh, rule of, of living together, I think we would have a different world. And so because, then, yes. because the consequences of traumatization, and especially of the early traumatization, no, mm -hmm. is so huge. Mm -hmm. It's so huge, it lasts your whole life. And if you don't go to therapy, as you asked before, then it means you, you just survive. Mm -hmm. And in my, uh, my, my, my theory, I make a big difference between what means to live your life living mm -hmm. and surviving. And surviving is quite something different from, from living. I had a wonderful interview with um, a former interview guest and he also talked about we don't want to just survive, we definitely want to live. And mm -hmm. this is why we are on a conscious journey. This is why we are um, aware of blockages or becoming aware of blockages mm -hmm. to, to release them so that we can have a life. Mm -hmm. um, before I go into detail, just one thing, traumatized, with traumatized you mean hurt. So if you say never should a human being traumatize another human being. You mean never should a human being hurt another human being? Yes, this is the translation of some of the Greek word, word trauma, yeah? it's, it's, um, it's a, a wound, I, I'm wounded. Yeah? Mm -hmm. but on the, what does it mean uh, really on the level of the, psych, the psyche, the human psyche? It means that you have been brought into a situation of helplessness, of uh, lacking any, any uh, means to protect yourself, you are exposed and then you are confronted with a reality that is overwhelming for you and especially you can't deal with this reality with your feelings. You have, has, have so much anxieties, so much rage, so much shame, so much disgust, uh, all those, so much, so much pain, all those feelings that you can't in the end tolerate and then you have to split it off. Yeah? And trauma means it forced, you are forced when you're traumatized, you're forced to split your psyche. Mm -hmm. And what does it mean? The psyche normally is a tool for the living organism, for a living being, to bring you into contact with reality, that you realize what's going on, yeah? what is around me, about the, the, the things and all the other people. Now, when a psyche is traumatized, this means that you have to deny reality. That means the opposite of what a healthy human, a healthy psyche does. The healthy psyche wants to understand, wants to get clear, want, want, wants to, to see what's happening. Yeah? A traumatized psyche in one then very important part says, I don't want to understand. I don't want to perceive. I don't want to feel. I don't want to remember. I d and in the end, I don't want to be myself. I don't want to be I at all. Yeah? I, I sacrifice myself and as a substitute, I identify with something outside of me. Yeah? And this is why I think it's so important to understand what does it mean when a human being is traumatized? What, what harm you do to this person that this person loses contact with reality and then in the opposite becomes an enemy of him or herself. Self. So just um, very important points. When you say there is not even an I anymore, um, an identification. So do people um, develop a coping strategy to identify with a car, with lots of work, with depreciation success they get at their work or being parents, but then they don't, they do it without having the connection to themselves. They just are in the outside of themselves. Is that what yeah. you mean? There is no I anymore. Yeah, you can identify with another person. For example, you identify with a political leader, a religious leader. You identify with a guru, maybe also, or you identify uh, with the sports teams, yeah? Or you identify with things you are doing, yeah? You're doing uh, your work, the, labor, the work you're doing, or uh, you identify the role, a professional role, or you identify being a mother or father or whatever, yeah? But every, anything that prevents you from being really in contact with yourself. But and because, you're always in need. You're always yeah, in need. because Sorry. being in contact with yourself has the risk that, that you got in touch with your trauma feelings again. 
And so you do everything in order not to be in touch with yourself, always looking outside, always being active, always being a lot of talking, what mostly is a nonsense talking because it's not relevant, it's not important for you, but you read a lot of things that has nothing in anything really to do with yourself. Yes, like, uh, just do you have a pen in your hand? Because something is scratching sometimes. Is it a pen or is it your mic? Or maybe... I don't, uh, I don't know, maybe my hands, my hands are here on the desk, but maybe I, I put them down. And, uh, yes, and well, because it's, uh, it's so interesting. Yeah. I don't want to miss you know, a second of what you're saying. Yeah. So let's, yeah. let's, let's pick up the red line again. Um, Okay, I, I absolutely get. So when a person has, a human being has no I, then we are so much in need to identify with something outside ourselves that never can give us a fulfillment that we, that we would have if we fill our cup inside first. Mm -hmm. So then we are always in need to get the appreciation, the love um, that we normally would give ourselves or have inside of ourselves. And that makes us very needy. And if we're needy, we are, you know, we, we are just losing ourselves. Mm -hmm. and have expectations that are completely not realistic from the beginning on. And can Absolutely. I summarize that way? And um, now Buddhism said that, you know, life is suffering. And if you accept that life is not suffering anymore. And I was thinking while you were talking, wow, is this, um, you know, also Buddhism goes, unless you transcend it, unless you transcend the suffering and you become aware that um, we are living a lot of illusions. Does it mean that, um, is that part of human being also? Is it part of the process of being a human um, that it is suffering and that it has pains or is it just a wrong picture that we have that being a human can be t completely free of suffering and pain if we start working through the pain and works of history and generation? Mm -hmm. Of course, suffering is part of uh, our life, but it depends what type of suffering it is. And if it's a suffering I can tolerate, it's maybe also stressful, I can deal with it. But if the suffering is too much, is overwhelming, puts you in a state of helplessness, then you can't deal with the pain, then you suppress the pain, then you block the pain, you anesthetize the pain. And then the consequence is the pain is not away. The pain is maybe out of your consciousness, but the pain is still in your body. And then may it be this pain will show up in some bodily symptoms and illnesses or something like this. Uh, so I think it's, it's, it's very important to differentiate the, the, this sort of a pain, you know, what, what pain it is and where the source of the pain is. Yeah? And I think it, otherwise I would find too, generalization, uh, too much a generalization yeah. to say life at all is pain. No, life at all is, ever, is also joyful. Life is, is very different things that we can experience. So I wouldn't reduce life to pain. Yes, exactly. No, I, I understand what you're meaning. I've, I was told, yes, do live all that, but don't identify with it. So that was what I learned in my spirit lab brain. Um, if you want to, you know, do a media platform, if you want to do all that, do it but don't offend the identified too much with the role. And that helped me to um, see it more playful, have a little gap between that. Of course, things go wrong and things might be difficult, but then if I don't identify too much with the outside role and still keep the anchor inside, um, that makes it easier for me and more lighthearted. But it's practice. I do practice every day. So it's not something that comes yeah. easy. <laughs> but the difference is, in my theory, is identification is a surviving strategy, yeah? Okay. If you like something to do and say, okay, I like, I like to do it, but there are other things I also can do and there are different things I can do, then it, there is no, you are not forced to identify. Right? Okay. This the feeling forced to identify is a consequence of having lost, given up your original eye. Yeah? And then you need to identify. And if you stop identifying with one thing, then you start to find another thing or another, yeah, uh, 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 project you want to engage in, but you always need to some to find something to identify with. Let's go into an example. Um, our audience are female leaders and forty plus women and conscious men. I wanted to start originally with female leaders, but I'm I'm thinking forty plus women and coming to relationships makes um, a very good bridge to what you are saying because there it's very obvious sometimes to what people repeat doing 
that they feel almost, you know, pushed to. Um, I have a girlfriend, for instance, and she's a beautiful, wonderful woman. And she always repeats to go in the same pattern of men who treat her badly or going to an affair. And there's a big bubble of illusion. While the other girlfriends around her, of course, feel almost aching and compassionate. Oh, they, we want to shake her and mm -hmm. say, just wake up. This is really bloody, in quotes, um, illusion, a dream. It's not happening. But there is, she would keep up and pick up the same thing all over again. The same is also with, um, with celebrities men who just pick up the same kind of, sorry, it's the same kind of model over and over again, mm -hmm. same kind of pattern over again. You think, gosh, you're 50 by now. Something should have changed. She's again mm -hmm. 30. She has again the same looks like the previous one. Mm -hmm. So that is almost seems to be like an addiction is what mm -hmm. you're saying. Mm -hmm. So it's not, yeah. there's no guilt in that. Normally we say, can you not grow up? And we almost do finger pointing. We judge the person. But what you are saying, no, no, there's no judgmental. There's no guilt. This person has really a wound, is traumatized. And out of that trauma, he or she is repeating that. But don't blame the person because he cannot do differently unless he starts going into therapy or become conscious. Mm -hmm. Would you agree? Yeah. Yeah. And, and to, to make it clearer, the first love relationship you are in and everybody or everyone is, is in is the love relationship with your mother. Yeah? Love, the, 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 the original uh, purpose of love is to make a connection between a mother and a child. Yeah? And so the mother-child relationship is the first um, experience you make with love relationships. Yeah? And if you're lucky that this relationship with your mother is a really loving relationship and your mother really loves you and accepts that you love her, and then you, in a way, you find also in a way to, to separate from each other in a good way. Yeah? After three, four years, every year, uh, you get more independent, more autonomous. Then you are prepared for the next love relationship. Yeah? Mm -hmm. With a, let's say, with a friend or something, and later on with a partner. On the opposite, if the love, love relationship with your mother is something that hurts you, that traumatizes you, then you can be sure that you repeat this traumatizing relationship in every other intimate relationship yeah, and continue. And you have to continue because you don't, don't know it in any other way. And this is, of course, then you have to, have to, to look really closer. Why, what, what, why was the relationship with my mother traumatizing? And very often the, the relationship in our societies the, the mother-child relationship is traumatizing, especially because there so many mothers are traumatized. Yeah? Yes, that's they, what they I are, would say. They already are traumatized, yeah. And then it's it's a, a psychological rule you can say: a traumatized mother has a traumatized child. Hmm. Can a mother, when you say if the if we are lucky, we had a loving relationship with our mother, can the relationship ever be loving? Can a mother really love? Is that possible? If the mother society. is not traumatized, of course, that is abs absolutely, that is what she likes. And many, even many traumatized mothers want, want to and really just have the desire to love the children, but they don't have the psychological capacities mm -hmm. because trauma prevents you from having access to your feelings. Yeah? And that means if you have to protect yourself from your feelings and you got go in, in the contact with a with a baby that loves you and wants affection from you and wants your body contact you, then in, in a way, the traumatized mother has to self-protect her. Yeah? She, has to pr she has no way to protect herself from being over flooded by trauma, trauma feelings. And then if the child wants to contact with the mother, the mother becomes either depressive yeah. and fades away yeah. and, is not, and dissociates and is not present anyhow, or becomes aggressive and that does something and, uh, and rejects the child. There's so much, I'm just saying, there's every topic that you um, approach is just so deep. So every, so even if you try to live it on the surface, apologize to your audience, because we cannot go deep into every topic unless you know, we would stay here for hours. But maybe we are going to catch up um, Professor Ruppert again one day and we can talk about just parenting. Mm. only relationship you know for for one hour because it is i mean there are so pa many parents listening and they might think what i'm actually doing to my child 
I want to have the best interest for my child. So how can a mother who is, um, you know, plus 40 now and the children are older, about nine, 10 years, 11 years, and then we go into teenage time, that's very difficult for many uh, mothers and fathers. What can she do right now? Maybe she says, oh dear, I think I totally messed up. Oh dear, I, I didn't give that. Oh, maybe she's aware of that or she's questioning herself. But we don't want that. We don't want to layer any guilt on any kind of mother because that's not the point. But what can she do right now to say, does she, is it good that she goes into a kind of a therapy or in a, in a group to be more aware of what she's doing? Um, mm -hmm. What can she do now? The first thing what we always can do is to look at our biography. Under what circumstances did I become into existence? That, that this one question is, was I wanted at all by my mother or my, by, by my parents? The other thing parents is, will always say, sorry, parents will always say, yes, you were wanted. Yes. Most definitely, my mother yeah. would say you were so wanted. But a traumatology or a trauma specialist said to me, I don't think that you were really wanted. But I, you know, I couldn't say that. I, I didn't yeah. touch me at first. Sorry yeah, yeah. for interrupting you. But it's first just uh, to, to to see exploring our own biography yeah? and see what informations do I have. Firsthand in the first years of our existence, we just have secondhand information. We have information from from our mothers, from maybe sisters or brothers or whatever about the birth, birth processes. You can go and look if there's a protocol. Up in a hospital about the birth process and so on, yeah. And only later on we have our own memories and we can remember what happened to me, yeah. Mm. This is one thing. Uh, I say it's so important to take yourself serious from the very beginning. Okay. Yeah? This is what I mean with that. Ask the question: How did I come into existence? How was the time in the womb of my mother? How was the birth process? Was I have I been in the hospital after? after my birth and so on. Yeah? To just to get, to, to be interested in yourself means to be interested in your biography. Yeah? Mm -hmm. And when you find out there is a lot of blind spots and there is a, is a high risk that these blind spots could be drama, drama holes, then the next step would be to go to a, to a therapist or, or therapeutic group to find out more about these black holes. Mm -hmm. And this is what I especially can offer with my, uh, what I call the intention method, that we really can, can go back to the beginning of our life, yeah? how we were at the first moment of our existence, we were in the room, what happened there, and you, then you get the information you need for yourself in order to realize who you are and who you really are and what really happened in your life. And this is, uh, I think, what it, at first is to be interested in yourself at all and not just starting uh, with then when you have uh, conscious memories or maybe you say, oh, my, my history is not important. I, I really can tell you your history is very, very important for you. Be so, interested in your history, in your personal history. Absolutely. Right? I absolutely like that. Um, I've got two questions. Coming back again to the mother that might, you know, have a teenage kid or the kid becomes a teenager when kids act out and want to separate. Mm -hmm. um, so in, in order to help the kid, you wouldn't say necessarily to focus all the attention on the kid, but maybe start looking at her own history. Absolutely. That has immediate effect on the kid as well. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Absolutely. Today I worked with, a, uh, with someone in my, my group and she's, her intention was, I am mother from two boys, yeah? And she just uh, wanted to explore, I am mother. And it turned out that she tried to be a mother for her child, for herself, because her mother was not available for her. Yeah? Yes. So she, in a way, she wanted to be both. She wanted to be both. She wanted to be, she is a child, yeah? And yes. at the same time, being a mother for herself. And this is impossible. Yeah. And of course, this has consequences, how she is a mother for her children then. Yeah? How and the, do more, the more you get, 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 uh, become aware about your biography, the more you become aware if you, if you, of being a mother for you is coming out of a healthy part of your psyche or is a surviving strategy. Okay. And children notice that. Yeah? Yes. And if children, you, you can't... <laughs> 
you can't tell children the opposite. If they, 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 they notice that you maybe play the mother role instead of being a mother. Now, when you have a child, I, um, I know a young woman and she's about 21. She's absolutely phenomenal, intelligent. Um, what she does is she always has, a, you know, a tendency for drugs, but she always is so destructive again to her own talent that nothing is happening because she has a talent, but stuck destructive again. She's amazingly beautiful. So she has what you would call to society, all the things that make a wonderful, successful, beautiful woman. And, but it's not happening. She's, I can feel that she's very empty inside. She's very unhappy and she has an amazing addiction to, to be liked by other people, to be, be appreciated, like extremely insecure. She's to a point insecure that she doesn't even dare to call somebody to ask something. And you would, you just think what's happening. So getting angry with her, I think that's the least what you can do. But when I was talking to her, because I really could see her talent and also her barriers, um, there's an absolutely no, and the mother acted out like a victim. She is still a victim. She has always been a victim and there's nothing you can do. So, um, you cannot go to the mother because the mother would completely be in denial. Um, and then you have to go to the, to the daughter, to the young woman and say, look, go into therapy or do something or into coaching that you're aware that this whole thing is you, you are beautiful, strong, but if you're not feeling that yourself, nothing is coming, but she is in denial as well. Can you do anything about it as someone who sees it, somebody who appreciates those people, or do you have to completely back off and say, they have to hit bottom until they really hopefully do something. Mm -hmm. And the question is, what is the bottom? No? Mm -hmm. And the bottom in my experience is, even if her mother behaves like a victim, this mother is a perpetrator. Mm -hmm. This mother is the perpetrator against her child. Mm -hmm. On the other hand, for us as children, nothing is more threatening than to say and speak it out loud my mother is a perpetrator. She perpetrates me. Yeah? And she doesn't want me to exist at all. She treats me like an object. She would, she, it, 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 for her, uh, it would be the best when I am her mother and uh, be her for there because she has so many, many uh, child needs and so on. And that, this all includes that you have to admit your mother perpetrates you. And you, you are the victim of your mother. And this is my experience. That is something nearly every one of us doesn't want to realize. And we do everything to deny this truth. Yeah? And so healing comes with truth. This is, I'm deeply convinced about that. The moment I'm able to admit the truth, what happened to me, then you're clear in your mind. Because then you can have access again to your pain, the pain of being rejected, uh, the pain of, it's so, it's, it's, it's the, uh, I would say, it's the, the, the basic pain at all of a child, of every, every human being, that your mother doesn't want you and perpetrates you and makes you a victim. But if you can go to this point and really feel this basic pain of my mother doesn't want me, and rejects me, then you get clearer and clearer and clearer, and you can stop all those self-destructiveness because the self-destructiveness is that you think you're wrong. Yes. Huh? Not something yes. wrong has been done to you, yeah. but you, th you take the perspective of the perpetrator of the mother that tells you that you're not sufficient, that you are wrong. And this is why what I call the perpetrator-victim dynamic, and you only can exit the perpetrator victim dynamic by admitting those basic truths. And one of the most basic truths is my mother is a perpetrator towards me. Okay, then to just recap, because I think this is so important that many older women are listening or women in my generation and think, yes, what, how did my mother treat me? And I know that my mother didn't do the best job, but over time and over practice, I was really able to totally forgive her and I can see this was just on a different, I could put it aside and could um, pull myself back. So what you're saying is when we are talking about this example, this young, beautiful, intelligent woman, what she sh should or what would help her is putting the energy back in that process with help and taking that back from, she wants absolutely that her mother loves her. 
and the mother isn't capable of loving her. So it's, it's really sad to see it from the outside. It's a very vicious cycle. And she does everything to get love in the outside now and with drugs and the mm-hmm. emptiness and mm-hmm. not facing her pain also. Um, so in that being, having help at her side, being able with that safety to see the truth, what happened, um, put the energy back away from her mother, being, being able to see my mother is only capable of that and she will never be able to give me the love that I so wanted, not because she didn't want to, but she couldn't because she comes from a wound. So that no, I no, think the, helps the, already the important, the most, uh, let's, Let me <laughs> clear yes, this point. Please do yeah. so. The most important thing is that you realize your mother has, the mother traumatizes you. The relationship with your mother is a traumatizing relationship. Mm-hmm. That means this relationship puts you in a state of absolute helplessness yeah, and panic. Yeah? And this normally already, this uh, or, or, that you realize your mother doesn't want you, you realize it already in the womb. Yeah, you you feel already in the womb that your mother is not available for you. No, no, I, I, I get you. I was just asking, and it's really important that because so easily we, we, read, we read things, we hear what you're saying, and people just nodding their head. And sometimes I feel that it's not really owned. So I really want to own that, what you're saying. It's so, so important. Um, I sometimes see um, people coming from therapy, and there are different kinds of therapies, um, and they, they are still, you know, after five years or 10 years, still saying, my father did this, my mother did this. And I sometimes say, isn't there a point of forgiveness, a point of understanding? Yes, my mother traumatized me. Yes, my mother was a perpetrator. And it's sometimes forgiving her because she has done, she couldn't do that differently because she was traumatized as well. This was my point. Mm-hmm. I'm completely wrong. Mm-hmm. In yeah, your yeah, yeah, but forgiveness doesn't help you. This forgiveness doesn't help you to come out of the split because you are split. You have split off your pain and okay. you have to all, you have developed all those surviving strategy okay. and forgiveness is just another, in my point of view, is just another way of surviving strategy. Yeah. Okay. It's a cognitive thing. Yeah. The only thing that would bring you out of your splitting is you come face to eye to eye into contact with the, those early parts of you that are still in a state of trauma okay. then only when you come into contact and this is painful mm. there's a lot of feelings of shame is also included in that then you can be whole again no longer being split it mm-hmm. and believe me this pain is in this early stage of your of your development is so huge you even can't do it in one step mm-hmm. sometimes you have to do it in 10 or five, five or 10 steps, like to, to open a little bit of this, if you say this is a balloon full of pain, just a little, over a little bit, let drop out something a little bit to digest it, and then we go on living and become more clear, and again, open it up, yeah? mm-hmm. because it's, it's a tremendous pain. Otherwise, people would, wouldn't do so many things in order to, do, to avoid the pain. Yeah? The, 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 the heavier our surviving strategy are taking drugs, uh, destroying yourself, the more you can get an idea how deep this pain is, this early pain of your existence. And this is not, uh, you, you can't go over it. You can't go over it by just thinking, okay, everything is, is fine. And now I forgive my mother. That doesn't, that doesn't help you. No, I totally get, I, I absolutely. I mean, you run open doors. Um, I, I see the danger of the whole spiritual movement of spiritual bypassing and going on the surface and it's so dangerous and people sell workshops and commercialize their things. And I mean, it is really dangerous. Young, young people do this very often and that has no foundation and they are not skilled and equipped for holding a space of safety and that people can release the pain. Um, I just, was visiting one workshop and 1,400 people were there and they were going through traumatic experience because the workshop leader was doing that. And I think he, to me, he was Jekyll and Hyde. Um, And he's doing a wonderful job in the beginning, but when it came to the method, um, it it was scary to me. And I left, after three days, I left, although I was intrigued by his approach and it came from your science. But I left, it took me, I think, eight weeks to get back to myself and to, you know, all the screaming people. It was really strange for me. Um, what I wanted to ask is, and, and being a little bit enjoyed about it again, um, 
and brave to ask it again. What I wanted to ask, is there a part in your approach that forgiveness is important? Or do you say there is no forgiveness happening? I, people don't need, when they come to themselves and let their pains out, that's when it's becoming whole and forgiveness, it's, it's, it's just doesn't, doesn't need to happen anymore. Mm -hmm. it's part of the process it doesn't yeah own one job. thing maybe forgiveness is important that you forgive yourself that, that for so many years you didn't look at yourself okay. maybe this is what you can say that forgiveness is needed that you really forget i see it in the processes yeah how much and how over years we do not look at ourselves ignore ourselves we ignore our suffering we ignore all the symptoms that are sent it by out by our traumatized part yeah? so in a way of course at the end you have to forgive yourself that for so many years to do so a lot of harm uh, towards yourself but on the relational level forgiveness doesn't change anything yes yeah? I get you. even it doesn't help your mother because your mother has to do the same thing because when she is split when she is traumatized then she has to do the personal work on herself and then if she does the work and you do the work then is there, there's no need for forgiveness. You just to continue with a good relationship then, yeah? if yeah. this is possible. Mm -hmm. uh, and uh, otherwise, with forgiveness, it's, uh, you feel morally uh, above your mother then. If you forgive yeah. something, is some looking from upside down to something, oh, he's, he's, not, he's not able. So this is it's a strange relationship yeah? that would okay. result from that. I, I, wouldn't, I wouldn't do that. Eye to um, eye contact. Eye to eye contact. This is what what we need for constructive and, and healthy relationships. Now let's let's go back to the example. Let's say that the beautiful um, intelligent woman goes to therapy. She she has the bravery. I mean, that takes a lot of bravery if people face their pain, as you say, and take it step and one small step at a time. Um, and then she has come over months or years, she has come to a point where things are releasing and the pain is releasing and the wholeness comes back into place. Will she ever have from that wholeness a good relationship with her mother who might have not gone through therapy, who might still think that she is the victim? Is that then possible? I give the example from, from my own example. Huh? Yes. Of course, I, I was always thinking how, how I could improve the relationship with the mother. But the more I look at myself and take myself serious, the less I have really interest in having contact with the mother because she has so different interests from myself. And in a way, contact with her for me is really boring. Yeah, mm -hmm. it's, it's a, Somehow I would say it's a waste of time for me because I do those so many interesting things. And so the question is, why do I want to have a relationship with somebody? And why do I want to have a relationship with my mother? Is there anything special in that? And if you just, yeah, because it's my mother, there is nothing. This is not, not, not a good reason for that. Yeah, It must be something in special. Speciality will say, oh, yeah, this is good. I go with my mother shopping and I like this. And, and this is, is, is beautiful. Of course, do it. Yeah, But if, if you do not need to... Uh, Betray yourself when you are in contact with the mother. Betray all the inner parts that are still afraid, maybe of her. You can have, a call. of course, you can do something with your mother. But in the moment, and this is also my, was also my experience, the time before I was looking really at myself, yeah, and I was visiting my parents, after that, I was dissociated. I wasn't clear. Yeah? I was in a state of like anesthesia, yeah. Because all my inner parts were in an, an up, upset, yeah. Because they they still perceived my parents as the uh, my parents as the perpetrators, yeah? and so this is <laughs> the question. With every relationship, if a relationship forces me to split myself, I wouldn't do that. Okay, I get you. I, I absolutely get you. I mean, I I like the honesty in this. I absolutely like this because not many people would say that. And, you know, the whole society tells you so many lies. And one of them is um, your parents are sacred. You know, they are everything. And I just had this young African woman and she was, uh, it was just gentle and really beautiful listening to her. But in Africa, she would say, look, our parents are almost sacred. We are not until we are 30 or have our own kid we don't say anything against our parents and we treat them with all kind of respect and very, very polite. So she was shocked about the rudeness that she saw in Germany, that we are not polite with our parents. But what I hear you saying is, um, 
listen, you don't have to be, if, if, you know, if that is not doing something healthy for you, why should you have a great relationship with your parents? What for? And my, one of my mentors early time, I also interviewed him. That was when I was living in California and um, he is, he's very straightforward. And he said, you know, I just fired my parents when they were 13 and it was like, and he, he's just laughing and he's just not laughing at his parents, but he just went away. He was very strong by himself and he never had the need to go back to his parents. Mm -hmm. And I found this pretty amazing because you are told, you know, if you don't have family, if you don't have kids, if you don't have a loving relationship in your life or with your parents, your life pretty much sucks. And what you are saying, the most important relationship what we have heard, but not to this degree you're saying that, is with yourself. And if you have to split for anybody, for a man with whom you have an affair who's not treating you good, or for a mother who is perpetrating you and thinks she's a victim, then disconnect and go back to yourself. Is mm -hmm. that wrapped yeah. up what you're saying? Yeah, do it as soon as possible. Huh? And yeah. as a child, you can't do it. As yeah. a child, you're forced to stay. You're dependent. You are, uh, you know, you need, your needs only can be fulfilled uh, from the parents but the moment when you see it, this this is no good for you and then you can and you can leave and become then you can become an adult taking responsibility for your life and no, no longer what we as children do we feel responsible for our traumatized parents no? yes. so many persons i see in my my therapies that spend the whole childhood in order to keep the family together yes. yeah? They were fighting and struggling and arguing, yeah, and were not quite polite to each other. Yeah, I don't know where this idea of politeness comes. I also know people from Africa, and uh, they know that they say, "Yeah, we were beaten as children, and there was a lot of struggling." My father was drinking, so it's it's just an idea, yeah, mm -hmm. to of, of of family. It's not the reality of families as as you as, as they really are. And on the other hand, I'm polite with my parents. I don't want to to hurt them, but I'm somehow I say I live my life and they can live their life and I'm they don't have any implications against me and I don't have any implications against them. Okay, but you don't try to make um, them understand you. You don't try to fix them. You don't try to be loved. You you don't have that need anymore. You can allow them to be there are, but disconnect to the way as yeah. it yes. because I know. They have, they suffered from their childhood a lot of trauma. They have there's also survived the Second World War, in, in my case, my parents, and they are severely traumatized and never had any chance to, to look deeper. They found their surviving strategies in a way, and they are now 85 and 86, and they won't do anything uh, uh, in order to clear up their own biography. So let, I let them do what they do. And I do my, my things. Yeah. Okay. And um, yeah, it's a waste of, I say it again, it's it would a waste, be a waste of, of time. Yes. It would be a waste of time for both of us. Yeah. Yes, I get you. I get you. Oh, now just please uh, watch your hands that they're not on the table because then we hear the scratching and we okay, cannot so, hear what you're saying. No, no, okay. but Excellent. just what we wanted to make sure that we can hear you properly. Yeah. Um, and the other danger I see, now you might, you know, say that's absolutely not the case, but I always saw a danger in that from my um, little universe perspective. Um, I see sometimes people going to therapy for a long, long time and um, say, talking about their parents, talking about the father, what he or she did and the parents. And then I sometimes thought in my naive state, just take a salsa class. You know, you've done 10 years of therapy and you're still so depressed and still... And I think, is this the wrong therapy or is it just, is there a danger, what I want to say, that people get too much fixated on therapy and that they take it as enough, another coping mechanism and don't get the way out of it? I mean, isn't there a time when you do it intensely, when you're brave enough to face and have hopefully a really wonderful therapist and knowledgeable, and then there's a closure and then you leave and then you leave it and then the next stage in your face starts. Mm -hmm. Is there mm -hmm. a danger that people and therapists as well don't find the way out anymore and get stuck way too long and then it goes contraproductive yes of course therapy also can be a surviving strategy like drinking alcohol or taking medication and so and one of the things that normally therapists tell you when you when you're complaining about about your parents and so is forgiveness it's forgiveness. I just say hand kiss. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> Sorry. 
<laughs> uh, 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 me the contact with yes. the microphone here. No, I'm so sorry for, for being such is, a nuisance. This is really what I observed, that if there is the conflict with uh, children and traumatized parents, and traumatized children and traumatized parents, most of the, the, the traditional psychotherapists tell you forgiveness, mm -hmm. reconciliation. And that, in my view, even deepens the split. Mm -hmm. And so what I'm looking for and what I'm offering in my therapy is to look at your split, to look at the fact that you're traumatized by traumatized parents, and then you have other you find other solutions and you, you, then you have the focus is not on the parents any longer, but the focus is on yourself. Mm -hmm. So we spoke before we started um, the production, we spoke shortly about um, also spiritual leaders, spiritual gurus. And um, in Brazil, um, just one guru happened to, you know, he was accused of um, sexual harassment in many cases. And I know many people went there. It's a beautiful place in Brazil. I mean, the, the place is just breathtaking. And everything was a, a bubble of love, or at least was felt because nature was also so beautiful. And then there, um, there is a man who is a guru. And then the shadow side is that. And I hear many, many more stories of that. There are gurus out there. And then suddenly there is this big shadow. And um, some people say, well, if you're awakened in one passage of your life, that doesn't mean you're awake in every passage of life. But first there is this male guru who asks things to do that you think, whoa, would you ever do that? Which, which if somebody asks you to do sexual things or services, you would think, wow, something is wrong. So on the other hand, there are women going there and doing those sexual services in order to be healed. So on both parts, there seems to be a big wound. Mm. Yes, of course, sexual trauma is wide, very widespread. It also, also starts in the families. And maybe some of those women who did this with the guru already did it with, her, with the father mm -hmm. and had already experienced sexual uh, demands from the father. And because of the lack of the mother love, but because the mother was not available, then the child in a traditional family is looking for a mother substitute. And sometimes this could, is the father and the father himself being traumatized, being uh, needy and, uh, and, cl and closeness uh, in uh, body contact, then very easily is sexualized by a, a grown-up man. And then there is a sexual trauma between the father and the daughter. And this is ignored again because it's split off again. You want to, uh, I, I know so many, I know so many women that, only during therapy I realize, oh, there was something like a sexual trauma in my childhood with my father or grandfather, whoever he was. And then if you ignore this yeah, and split it, split it off and even split even more of your eye yeah, and, and, and your own eye, then you're looking for a substitute, mother or father again. The guru could be one, one of this. And then you repeat, reenact the trauma from your childhood with the guru because this guru very often is also a traumatized person. Yeah. Even he doesn't admit it, it would not admit it that he's traumatized. But okay. I have I have some contact with some gurus. Yeah. Some some someone was, was visiting some month ago in my practice here in Munich and I only asked him about his childhood two questions, then it was clear how traumatized he was, but yeah. he was not aware of it. He was thinking I'm an enlightened person, I know everything. And so and this is so easily that those even males who are severely traumatized are seeking for these superior positions and then in order to act out those the sexual so sexual desires and it is easy because they, they are easy prey. Right? So then because we have they, the perpetrator victim dynamic again. Again and the, the, mm. the women in a way are really easy prey because they already know this lack of love from the mother, this crossing borders from their father and other maybe also brothers or some something at some person like this, and then they can, cannot understand and realize what this does to them if they now are having sex with the guru. Mm -hmm. How can you, um, some women might maybe get afraid or people who are on a, on a conscious path and um, this place in Brazil, for instance, has been you know so safe to many for so many years. And then of course it struck them. And I thought my first um, idea was, well, maybe this is, showing us grow up and you know bring back go back to your own authority again 
as you said in the beginning, you fill your own cup and um, you become whole again, release the blockages of the pain. So would you say that therapy is above all the groundwork, the foundation for everything before you go into a spiritual process? Mm. A spiritual means mental, no? A, a and, conscious uh, yeah. process, yes, a yeah. conscious process of yeah. becoming aware. And, and, and my, in, my, in, my, in my view, in my experience, you only get a clear mind, a clear consciousness, if your feelings are clear. Mm -hmm. huh? You can't buy. You mentioned it before. You can't bypass your feelings, mm -hmm. and this very often is, is is the case that you bypass your feelings, you bypass your trauma experiences, your trauma feelings, and go and want immediately go to the level of spirit. But then this spirituality is emptiness. And this spirituality is not about understanding, knowing, uh, even uh, exploring things, but is to in a way not. To think, dif to differentiate in your thinking, no longer understanding contradictions in your thinking. Yeah, mm -hmm. you abuse your thinking as a surviving strategy, because normally consciousness is very specific consciousness about what's going on in the world, yeah? mm -hmm. and not a retreat. I don't retreat from the world in order to become conscious. Mm -hmm. I have to be in contact with the world in order to become conscious, mm -hmm. be, be conscious of the world. Yeah, mm -hmm. that is a wrong concept of consciousness mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and enlightenment. Right. And yes. in the end, consciousness is just light. What a what a nonsense is this this is. Yeah. Wait a minute. Now, I in my in my process um, in my practice process, and I was I'm, I'm still very emotional, but you know I could sometimes do the drama out of it or go into the spiral of negativity. So I was learning in the course to not go into the negativity to feel it, but then go out of it again and not keep going into the emotional negativity of worry or of poor me or whatever would come up in that, in that stage. But that's not what you're saying was feeling. It's not going to the end and it's just feeling it. And then are you saying stepping back of it? No, my, my idea is and my experience is maybe already in the womb, mm -hmm. you experience the trauma huh? mm -hmm. and then you have to split off and you are born already split it and, and there's still a part of you that is feels like in the womb time yeah? yes. and that means you have again to come into contact with this part of you in order to to clear it up in order to yeah to become whole again because you have split off this part yeah that has nothing to do with positive things or negative things it just has to do with yourself that you come into into contact with those parts of you that you have split off let's say a, a child that was raised up in an incubator after birth, yeah? mm -hmm. then there's still a part of you laying in an incubator mm -hmm. or whatever it is, yeah? as a five years old, old one that was sexually traumatized, then this is still split off inside you and you have to go into contact with this part of you. And this part of you tells you a lot of feelings and shows a lot of feelings. Mm -hmm. And then the question is, can you tolerate those feelings? Can you take back those split off parts of you now because now you're a grown up mm -hmm. you have much more resources than you had in the womb than you had shortly after birth by the five year old child mm -hmm. you resourced and maybe you have to build up more resources during the therapy that is mm -hmm. a huge part of therapies is building up the, the the main resources of us the eye and the will mm -hmm. i have to do a lot of a lot of uh, processes in order to get my eye back and to strengthen my will. And then with this, then if you have the platform to go into contact and resourced enough now to look at those split off parts of you. Okay. And this has nothing to do with positive or negative feelings. Yeah. It's just reality. You come in, what, in contact with what, with what was real. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I'm just talking about something that you have in the present moment and where you see yourself like you make a drama out of it or you you get stuck in the, the anger of it men get very often very angry and they're so furious and they just take it out on the next car driver i mean there's so much aggressiveness we are both living in munich i don't know if you have experienced that but the aggression in munich in car driving is just horrible so mm -hmm. i think there's a lot of anger in people and men take it out angry and being in you know, take it out on the football field or wherever and that's not what it's supposed to be it's supposed to go to the source of the anger 
and what you're saying is in the womb where, where it started. So um, as the last question, and we wanted to go to so much, or I wanted to, <laughs> but I, I hope that I'm going to see you next year at one point again. Um, and I'm sure also our audience. So in the, what, I, um, what I hear you saying also is you cannot do it on a logical, rational way. You cannot go, you know, doing some research, how was the birth, like for many mothers, they don't even remember or they don't know anymore. Or um, for my partner, he comes from Romania, so they don't even have a birth certificate anymore. Mm. So you, cannot, you can only do as much research as you can do. And in what you then do is in trauma therapy with your tools, you take the, your patient, your clients into a process where they gently are going to reconnect and feel the pain and let that pain go in order to become whole again. So this is not something that you can do just reading your books or reading anything about. Mm. You, you cannot do it on a logical level. You have to mm. find somebody who is guiding you in a very experienced and safe spot and leading you to that spot that was hurting you and is the cause of everything that came up later. Mm. Mm -hmm. yeah, is that what you're right. saying? That's right. That's absolutely right. There is a, a point where you, you can, of course, you can interest yourself, yourself, your biography, but there are points where you can't get access for yourself on your own, not by meditation or whatever. Mm -hmm. Just uh, that is, if there is help, then take help. If, it, mm -hmm. if help is offered, then why not being so wise to, to take on this offer? How can you, um, and I promise, this is really my last question. How can you... Um, be sure that you have a good therapist. Uh, some people go to some therapist or go to a therapy and they sh share something with you and you, you just feel listening, that doesn't feel right. But you don't mm -hmm. say anything because it's, it's not your job. But how can you make sure I have the perfect therapist because I deserve it? Yeah. The one, there are four different things. The one thing is that what is the theory behind the background of this therapist? Mm -hmm. yeah? Can he really explain it to you? Did, did he have some papers or where you can can uh, check it? What what is he addressing? Has, for example, does he have an idea about what the psycho, what the human psyche is, what the psychodrama is, how important those processes already before birth are? All those things, yeah, that you can see. This person is, in a way, educated on the theoretical level. Okay. Yeah? The second okay. thing is, what is his method? How does he work? And this is a method that includes you, yeah, and and really respects you and, and and takes you on and takes you on the hand where you in the moment are, or is something that is, uh, yeah, it's you are treated, yeah, mm -hmm. it's a treatment. And whenever somebody wants to treat you, I I, I won't I won't <laughs> I won't be uh, I won't trust this person. Mm -hmm. On the other hand, of course, uh, every every person just is in his own process, and me too. Yeah? I'm I'm just on the, on the way. I wouldn't say I'm perfectly uh, clear with everything. Yeah, I, every month I do a process for myself in order to get all get those split off parts of myself again to to, yes. to with me. And this is if the therapist also says, "Oh no, I'm the I'm I'm the guru. I, I know everything, and, and 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 you are the client, and you are uh, the the person that needs my support." Then don't trust this person. Yeah? Okay, because okay. we all are humans. You are you all are on the way, and some are more have progressed a step further, others not yet, didn't not yet this step. So this, yeah, and, and then you have and this, then you can maybe look at the web page of of this person, yes. make a, a session or a, take a, take part in a group, and just check it out and check it out and trust your gut feelings. Yes, that's what trust I want to say. Trust, trust your, your gut feelings. feelings. Yes, I think that's very important to go with your resonance. I met once a mentor and she, um, we just didn't hit it off. Absolutely. I mean, everything would from the outset say, just go, just run. But there was something inside of me that just, no, this is right. This is right. And even, you know, I would even, I'm never missing times. I would just miss our time. I would be late. I mean, that happened in a row three times. And I thought, no, it feels right. And she wanted to release me. And I said, no, 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 no. I, I, I really need to feel, come back because this feels right. And it turned out to be, um, very fruitful. So gut feeling is a wonderful positive end to that because we all do have gut feeling, even if we have wounds and some have more, some maybe have less, but we do all have the same kind of gut feeling. And um, thank you so much. I'm going to have, I don't have sushi. I mean, I just could have, you know, have some where my Tommy was making not much of noise. 
during the interview. I hope you didn't hear that. So I'm going to have something to eat now. Thank you so much for staying up late and, and coming back to me. As I said, I, I had a whole different prepared interview that was um, 40 plus women and relationship work and men and women mm. and female leaders and male leaders. But this had such a different dynamic and I love how the dynamic goes. If, um, if I do have one more session with you one time and we can talk about female leaders for the audience, that would be wonderful. Okay. Um, thank you so much. Have a beautiful rest of your day. Thank you, dear audience. This was New Generation Women with Janine Tandenos. This was Professor Dr. Franz Ruppert. And hopefully, wherever you are, see you soon again. Bye-bye.